Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. For this video I've added contract configurators so let's take a look at what contracts we have. I added just the bases and stations pack. Of course contract configurator sort of sorts everything out here so now we've got categories but what I'm most interested in is this uh, bases and stations thing. Send crew to moon station. Well I don't even have crew actually. We really need to retrieve crew is a thing but let's just uh, start things out right we've got these launch this station that station that station so uh, we should just pick up those so that it has those to start off uh, support and the science lab cupola seems fairly straightforward mm -hmm. these are all the same and uh, which one we launch first will just be dependent on which window we get first and return a surface sample from Leith's Peaks to Lake, Leith Station. Uh, <laughs> it's got some interesting, uh, interesting contracts, doesn't it? Okay, scan a suitable, suitable location for a new base on the moon. Orbital resource survey of the moon. We haven't done that yet. Okay, first of all, we'll pick that up. Oh, that's uh, send a rover to Tylo. Okay, well, well, I mean, there's no downside to picking up a whole bunch of contracts. We've got plenty of room. And let's get all of these. The crew to Moon Station will have to wait simply because we don't have crew. Payload specialist. Hmm, yeah, that's a totally separate thing. But these are interesting contracts, aren't they? The bases and stations contract pack hasn't been updated in a long, long time. So I was sort of worried that maybe... We, it wouldn't work properly, but it seems to be working just fine. Obviously, we'll see in the execution of the contracts and whether it gives us what we deserve at the end, in which case we'll have plenty of funds to do more things. So even though we've completed the tech tree, we are still limited by funds in terms of what we can do. Let's take a look at which window comes up next. Basically, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to jewel, or we've got Duna. And... It looks like we're really close to a Duna window. In fact, we're just uh, maybe a little bit past the Duna window, but we could probably swing it because there's the closer to Duna side. We can see. Let's try and do the Duna one. So it wanted a Duna station, and that'll be our, I guess, first Duna station. Duna space station. All right. It doesn't actually require Kerbals to be on board at the time. So, all right. We'll see how that works and whether it asks us to build more on it. That's the main attraction. We don't want to just have a core module. We want it to tell us, uh, want it to, tell us to build some more stuff around it, right? Okay, so here's what I've come up with for a Duna station, at least the beginning of one. Uh, we've got the cupola as required, a science lab as required. It required room for four Kerbals, support four Kerbals. Unfortunately, the cupola and the science lab together support three, so I threw in a hitchhiker storage container, even though I could have done just like a Mark 1 cabin or something like that. Uh, but we go with the hitchhiker storage container, and we've got a docking module here. Uh, we've got fuel tanks. I decided to go with the wolfhounds here, uh, because they'll probably be the most useful. We could potentially take them off and put them on some other vehicle around Duna and use them like that too. But yep. And then, of course, the Wolfhounds can't lift off with this, so we do have boosters, the Pollux boosters, and we've uh, thrust limited them a little bit to 86%. And vacuum ISP is like that, but uh, we need to, not ISP, uh, Delta V, but to get the Wolfhound Delta V, we need to put them above the booster decoupling, so... Yes, uh, off the ground we get 1.3 thrust weight ratio right now. Uh, of course, the Pollux boosters do not gimbal, so we have to have fins, and I also have the reaction wheel in the cupola. Uh, we have a controller here, so we don't need a Kerbal, but I have not put comms yet, <laughs> I just remembered. Uh, so we need comms, because we won't have a Kerbal. We'll just go with direct and we'll use these Commutron 88-88s uh, for simplicity's sake. So it'd be nice to have uh, comms on the tail here, but the 
truss with the solar panels doesn't extend far enough. Maybe I can fix that, but no, nah, the dish when it extends will not have enough room there. Let me get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, we'll just put it on the side of these fuel thingamajigs. I don't know if I'm going to regret that or not. Uh, maybe, maybe over here is better. It'll block those windows, but maybe it's for the best. And we'll have the surface mat ones underneath here. Just two of them. Or maybe just one. I don't think it'll throw the balance off too much. Okay, so we'll go like that. And it's unfortunate there aren't ladders on this continuing down. Let me take the flag off. And I'm gonna put some more rungs. Uh, so that we have a more continuous sort of situation here. I've spared no part count here so far, so... And hopefully we'll sort of continue it on whatever modules dock to this. There is... this side is continuous, so... Yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> uh, maybe we need one set over here, though. And one set over here. I don't know how continuous we need these. We have lights even, I even remembered the lights this time, and of course we've got a fairing to protect the cupola, and I I really wanted a sort of half domes on top of these tanks on the side, but we don't have that kind of part in Kerbal Space Program. I would have liked sp spherical tanks uh, to give that sort of feel to it, but we don't have spherical tanks either, so I just went with this. Uh, and actually after this, this launch we might want to take a look at the whole business of maybe we can look to bring some of those Kerbals back or at least on board this Duna station to begin with. Let's see how many Kerbals we have at Duna after we launch this. Okay, well I think we'll just launch at night here. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Can I control this properly? We are about to find out. I picked a color for the lights that I thought would match Duna. Oh, yeah, turning is not easy. Okay, ignition of the wolfhounds. Yeah, 373 is pretty good. A good start. Okay. Oh, but. I neglected the thrust weight ratio. Oh. Well. Okay, we weren't trying to reuse those anyway. But our apoapsis is pretty high. I think we'll be okay, maybe? It's wobbly. So I deliberately avoided part clipping on this in the hope that that would make the station safer. People told me that part clipping in 1.12 is a little bit more dangerous. I also locked the robotics parts which are used to extend the solar panels. But honestly, the, sol the robotics parts should not like automatically do things without being told to do them when they're not under a force anyway. So. I feel like that's all dubious. This wobble is dubious too. Okay, fairing set. Oh, we might as well get the Commutron 88-88s out. Well, it looks like they will be able to get this to orbit, but boy, it's wobbly. Uh, let's add some more auto strutting. How about that? I think maybe it'll be safe to do that to root part. Mostly it's to grandparent part. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, 100 by 83. We've got 2,500 meters per second. I'm unlocking the robotics parts, extending all of our solar panels. Not so grand in the dark here, but it'll be fine. Okay, so they are all extended. Now, transfer to Duna. 
We are a little bit late, judging from where Duna is, but I figured it wouldn't be too bad. Let's see. But we're not going to follow this yet. I think we want to send a crew pod to bring some Kerbals back first. We will finally have multiple missions going to a place. Oh, there we go. We've got an encounter. No problems. Uh, we can bring that closer, but yep, no problems at all getting an encounter. Okay, and we'll figure out the mid-course adjustment later. We have the built-in alarm clock now, so that will help us. Let's double check that we have everything that the contract wants. They're all sort of the same, the jewel ones and the Stuna one. Yeah, it seems fine. Let's just change the vessel type to station. Okay, so all we have to do is get into orbit around Duna. It's still wobbly though. Boot part isn't necessarily the best thing, but it doesn't look like grandparent part is doing enough for us. Okay, uh, here we go. Let me double check our comms. Yeah, we're using the moon right now, so... That'll give us plenty of coverage as also a site right there. Okay, and this burn leaves us with... Uh, 1,449 meters per second. And we will plot the mid-course adjustment and for the first time use the alarm feature. A little bit of inclination around Duna might not be bad, just to cover a little bit more area. I think I'll leave it like that. That's not a lot, it won't get to the poles or anything. But I think it'll be alright. Only a 2.2 meter per second correction, but it's better than trying to do it here. So, alarm... Okay, add alarm. Okay, uh, looks fine to me. So this is on its way, but let's go to the astronaut or Kerbonaut complex to see how many Kerbals we have around Duna slash Ike that we can bring back. There's a lot at Gilly Station, but there's this Duna mission too. Some Drez, gosh, we haven't we haven't even thought about Drez in a long, long time. Duna Mission 3, but that's a lander, it says. Bill hasn't even gotten any stars yet. Ike Mobile Base, 3, 4, or at Ike Mobile Base. Let's take a look at what the Duna Mission 2 and Duna Mission 3 are. Okay, here we have Ted Bree in Duna Mission 2, which is in orbit around Duna and has a docking port, so that's reasonably convenient. We might even dock this to the new station, but it's completely out of fuel. So that's not super convenient. But yeah, it uh, clearly had aspirations to be sort of a uh, sort of a station module, but not all of the features. Now, Duna Mission 3 lander is in a polar orbit, and it too has negligible delta V. So we're going to need something that can get to a polar orbit as well as an equatorial orbit. It might not be too hard because we just boost up high first and then tilt. And then we have Ike Mobile Base, which is landed. So all four of them are in the mobile base that's landed. Oh, this isn't going back up though. <laughs> Uh, maybe it can. It's got those. Yeah, it's complicated. Okay, okay, okay. You can stop drilling now. Stop, stop, stop. It's got enough delta V. It it has a docking port. <laughs> uh, let's say let's say we want to bring this back. Now, is it balanced? Can it lift off like this? It's got the thrust weight ratio. All right. I want to get it off of the surface. Yeah, let's let's go up. Let's go up. There it goes. It's sort of magnificent, isn't it? 
I'll make sure we're uh, controlling from here. Okay, good. And then we just want to go prograde. We want these Kerbals to get their five stars and everything. It's about time they came home, really. But bringing six Kerbals home, hmm. It's an odd number. Not an odd number, but... We want to use two different Mark 1-3 command pods, or do we want to make some other arrangement? We probably need a little bit more height here. <laughs> Eventually those contracts are going to tell us that we should send crew to these stations that we're building, so best to bring everybody back. That seems like a fairly convenient window for Duna this time around. This sure takes its time to get to orbit around Ike, though. Oh, we're still converting the ore. Well, that's not too bad, but we'll just stop that for now. Who knows, we could use it for something else. Okay, we are in orbit around Ike for Kerbal Retrieval. So now let me cook up something that can get them from this, get the Kerbal in Duna Mission 2, and also Bill in Dune Mission 3 lander. Maybe we should have two different vehicles, but let us let me go take a look and see what I can do. Okay, well, this is probably a bad idea, but I decided that this might be the most efficient way to bring six Kerbals back from Duna. Uh, it just has enough Delta V to do some maneuvers around Duna and return. I decided to use the nerve because I put the terrier on and with but with the liquid fuel that you can pack into the wings it turned out that the, uh, using the nerve was better for delta v so even though it's so heavy so I think that's the way we're, we're gonna go I did of course clip it in in this case but my logic is that we dump the oxidizer so there's room in there for for the engine anyway uh, so it's sort of tight, but it's also very dart-like, which is why I named it Dart. And I'm a little bit worried that the center of mass is too far forward, and it will act like a dart as a result. <laughs> so uh, it's possible, but it's not meant to land with me, you know, taking it to a runway and sending it down on its landing gear, which it does have. It does have landing gear. It is meant to just parachute down. We have the parachutes there, so... That is the goal. We gotta send it out uncrewed, and we have an antenna there, and it's got this controller here. And our goal is to bring those Kerbals back, but this is an untested vehicle, so... Hmm... Uh, we may be condemning six Kerbals to their demise. We'll find out, but I need to put this on a launcher. It is currently 11.65 uh, tons, so it's not particularly light. Okay, well, I've gone with sort of a Titan-ish setup because I guess that's sort of like a dinosaur? Not really. But, uh, yeah, we've got the Pollux boosters again and we've got a Bobcat on the center this time. And, yep, and uh, upper stage with a Cheetah, so it's very much like uh, Titan. In fact, I even put the size 1.5 decoupler. By the way, I did put a fuel drain valve on our, our dart here, and that is because on the parachutes we want it to be as light as possible so we want to drain all the fuel once it's on the parachutes uh, otherwise we'd have to put extra parachutes so anyway yeah this could be interesting at least we're not launching it crude but we're bringing it back crude which is dangerous we'll have to find out my intention is that the cheetah stage will actually do some of the maneuvers in the Duna system. It's not a purely transfer stage, though it sort of looks like that right now. I think that we're going to have some Delta V remaining in the Bobcat stage to help with the transfer, uh, though turning is going to be interesting. <laughs> we're going to have, uh, we're just going to rely on the remote guidance unit up there's 0.5 torque to try and turn this, maybe the Bobcat gimbling. So, yeah. Okay, and maybe I'll just put Hibernate in Warp Auto right now. Before I forget. And let's launch this dart. Okay, well, without further ado, SAS on, throttle this up. We've got the Bobcat lighting on the ground, even though with the Titan, of course, it lights in mid-air. And that is because we don't have any gimbling on the Pollux boosters. So, 
we needed some way of controlling this, but it might be still tenuous. Uh, especially with the plane on the top. There's bound to be some aerodynamic issues. I'm gonna try and go a little bit straighter up than usual as a result, but mm, we will find out. Anyway, launch. I'll try and make sure we're following that prograde vector very closely, but if the aerodynamics are bad, the aerodynamics are bad. Uh, uh, oh no! No, uh, it's already bad. It's already bad. Uh, oh no! 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 I need fins on the Pollux boosters. Right. And okay, if we try and. Okay, well, I guess here we are. <laughs> We're doing a parachute test. I mean, the nerve is really expensive. The uh, drain vessel, drain started. Is it draining? Maybe, I, I want it on vessel, resources to drain. Maybe I need to specify that in the SPH or VAB or something. So we're a little bit heavier than we're supposed to be, but it's not too bad. Totally successful test of whether this can come back like this. <laughs> Actually, that, that is the least important thing. The, uh, going through the atmosphere and re-entering is much more interesting than this part. I don't know about the heat tolerances and everything. Uh, uh, this is a start. All right, all right. Recover that at least. So maybe we don't even need the drain valve, it looks like. Uh, I suppose I should learn how to use it properly. 31,000 recovered. 31,000, well, we recovered more than half of it anyway. Okay, so drain valve, what is it? Uh, I guess we really need to put it on a part with resources. Vessel. But now it doesn't even tell me what resources it's going to be draining. On this part it said none. On this part it doesn't actually say. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. And we need to work on our aerodynamics, which is... <laughs> Shh, you don't need to tell me. I mean, Titan would have worked... Well, Titan uh, for Dinosaur they would have put fins on too. Actually, I've launched Titan with a space plane on top of it without putting any fins and it still worked. Okay, so we've made sure that the lower tank drains first and we've got the fins. Yeah, this was already sort of a bad idea, but on the bright side we have a lot of money. <laughs> Alright, at dart number two. Okay, here we go again. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Let's be more patient about the whole turning thing. Ooh, ooh. Oh, it's gonna be tough. It's, I feel it already. It's gonna be tough. Oh, no! No! Okay, this... I, I'm just gonna put it in a fairing. It's like I'm starting the game all over again. <laughs> okay, fuel drain valve. Now what do you do? <laughs> this is our... A major test now. Okay. Yes, yes. Start. It doesn't allow you to drain the mop propellant, apparently. Okay, right. Fairing. Even the fairing is gonna have horrible aerodynamics, though. Maybe I should just have Bobcat boosters instead of the solid boosters. That way we'll have better control over things. Somebody's gonna try and teach me how to build rockets, I just know this. Give me all the wonderful advice they've learned from other people. <laughs> you know, this is this is just... no, I can't bring myself to do this. Okay, well... hmm. 
there's gonna need to be a different plan here. Okay, this may also be a bad idea, but I'm just gonna go ahead and space shuttle it. I don't know if this will work, but... Well, it's not on top anyway. So we're still carrying the cheetah stage up there, and what's gonna happen is this is gonna try and dock with the cheetah stage after it gets to orbit. I expect to get it to orbit just on the Bobcat, so yeah, we'll be able to do that. I guess we'll test docking. Uh, the Chia stage will have power and the remote guidance unit there, so. I've shifted the Bobcat and made it just uh, truss only, the truss mount, and I shifted it uh, closer to the shuttle side because then it'll point better through the combined center of mass, but there's no guarantee that's going to work perfectly. Yep. So here we go again. <laughs> Dart number three. All right, essay is on, thrall is up, and launch. Well, we know there's gonna be a tendency to this side. Can we control it at all? Not really. <laughs> okay. We're gonna spin around here. Uh, this is a heck of a ride so far. Uh, why did I have to call it Dart? That was just like asking for it. Okay, okay. We're getting close to solid booster shutdown. We're sort of okay now, I guess. Yeah, that sort of works. <laughs> oh man. And they keep telling me realism overhaul is harder than this. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. We just need to get to orbit and then redock and then the bobcat will have an easier time pointing through the combined center of mass. But it's not having an easy time right now. Yep, seems reasonably balanced right now. It's using about half the pitch authority, though. Okay, let's coast a bit. We are not turning much using the tiny reaction wheels in the control units. Okay, we are in orbit, though. Let's... open that shield. No guarantee we'll have control of this portion after we undock. Okay. And shield. Uh, there's some latent force on the main thing. Does it still have control? Oh yeah, it still has SAS on and everything. Okay, so it'll stop its rotation using the tiny reaction wheel. Oh, how did I manage to find the hardest way of doing this? Okay, they're both on hold instead of point to target. I've already used too much of the mod propellant, really. Okay, let's stop using the mod propellant. Well, we're docked. Let's make sure there's no cross speed here. Disable crossfeed. All right. Okay, well, we can try and transfer to Duna, but I'm feeling less and less happy with this whole idea. Okay, there's an encounter. Basically the same situation as the other mission. Uh, we missed the turn. Uh, okay, well, let's try and use the Bobcat. Okay, go Bobcat, go. We don't want the nerve there, we want the cheetah. And go. And go. There's the cheetah. I don't know. That's not a lot of Delta V even in this stage. And then we seem to have less than I was expecting in the space plane too. 
Okay, now we have an encounter and applying the mid-course adjustment. We could error break, but we'd have to dump the cheetah stage, so let's see how much it takes to get into orbit. We didn't even bother to check with the other, with the station mission. Could use Ike's help, maybe. Let's say that much, and how much does it cost? Uh, well, just about this stage in order to get into orbit around Duna. We'll see whether we want to do that or whether we can manage something with Ike. Anyway, I'll leave that be. But I will add the alarm for this. Okay, dart maneuver. We'll see what happens with these two vessels next time, but I was actually expecting to get through a lot more, but the dart mayhem stalled me. But yeah, we will proceed, and I'll try and be a little bit more efficient about conducting these missions in the near future. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, maybe we should just keep it simple. <laughs> Big constructs, simple launches might be the way to go. Yes, we'll go for size rather than finicky details. I'll think about that. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.